I think I have to stand like this. Okay. Good morning, friends. Hasmati uh, Rahalkar, founder of Medina Consultant, a service provider firm, which uh, we provide services across the globe for US, uh, Europe, uh, emerging markets, starting from uh, product development, uh, due diligence, and uh, gap analysis, submissions, scientific dosage writing, approvals across the globe. Uh, in today, another 20 minutes of time, or maybe 15 minutes, I would run through uh, about emerging market regulatory affair. I will be taking care of few markets or one or two markets because it would be very difficult to cover all the markets in 15 minutes of time. We would be taking care of, uh, we would be informing about regulatory framework of this key emerging markets as well as what are the major challenges for registration of branded generic in these markets. As per a market survey done by Global Intelligence Alliance, uh, these are the top 10 markets which are considered, uh, which are rated as top 10 uh, for the duration of 2012 to 2017. Markets are like BRICS, that is Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa, Indonesia, um, Turkey, Mexico, Chile, and Argentina. We'll talk about Brazil. The regulatory agency of Brazil is known as Envisa, National Health Surveillance Agency, which is located in Brasilia, which is the capital of Brazil. You can see here where Envisa is located. Envisa is established in 1999. It's an autonomous agency and operating under a special regime uh, under Ministry of Health. The major attributions for Envisa is to coordinate for sanitary surveillance system as well as blood and blood related products, monitoring drug and medical device pricing as well as registration, regulation control and prevention of smoking, and technical support for granting uh, patents to National Institute of Industrial Property. GGALI is responsible for agriculture products, GGIMP for GMP, GGMAD for medicines, GGSAND for sanitary products, GGTIS for technology, GGCOS for uh, cosmetics, GGLABLES for laboratories called as REBLAS, which is a local laboratory in Brazil. GG, a, GGPAF, that is airports and ports where uh, imports are coming, imported goods are coming, where import license and all our uh, activity happen. GGSTO for tissues and cells and GGTOX. This is the department responsible for toxicology studies and review. In Brazil, regulatory process is generally uh, divided in three parts. First and foremost parameter is to per, uh, obtain GMP or GCP inspection and approval. GMP is pertaining to manufacturing sites. GCP is for your clinical or bioequivalent center. Post approval only the dosage can be submitted uh, along with the manufacturing site approval or it can be uh, submitted earlier also and parallelly one can do submission and uh, site must file applications to invite uh, Envisa for inspection. Second step is to write a dossier, perform pharmacoequivalent study in Brazil, have a dissolution profiling and uh, uh, against local innovator, again at Revelas in Brazil, Bicolin study or city study. Uh, it is required to be performed against Brazil innovator, that is local innovator uh, defined by Envisa. It is, uh, it can be done either uh, India or anywhere in Brazil or outside Brazil. And co-validation studies which has to be performed at the local uh, manufacturing site which is going to be responsible for quality of the medicines. Third part, post all this activity is done one has to submit a dossier to Envisa, exigency response, if any, and then marketing authorization approval. 
major resolution in Brazil, uh, legislations are uh, or guidelines are known as resolutions by number. Uh, guideline 136-2003 is mainly for new and innovative drugs which are through semi-synthetic or synthetic active principles. 333-2003 specifies what are the guidelines or what are the requirements for product labeling. 899-2003 is responsible for how to perform analytical and bioanalytical method validation and what are the documents required to be submitted along with the dossier. 310-2004, it is responsible or it shows how to carry out pharmacoequivalent studies and dissolution profiling at Reblas. 1-2005 is state, uh, state uh, stability study and documentation. Uh, stability condition, minimum stability data, duration, test parameters and how to perform it. Uh, and how to specify, how to define self life, what if uh, in terms of if the product is not stable at 3075 or 4075. 315 list 2005 state post amendment, uh, post approval amendments, what, what kind of amendments one can submit which can be passed with notification or it would require analytical, uh, fr analytical uh, report from uh, Riblas or if requires any revalidation. 1170-2006 is for relative bioavailability and bioequivalent study for medicine. 25-1999 is how to perform international GMP inspections by Envisa. And 17-2010 states GMP practices. So what all in terms of manufacturing, in terms of GMP laboratory, what it has to be there. Uh, it specifies that. Critical technical documentation for submitting dosages with NVISA. Uh, DMF or equivalent. API is required to be of DMF grade or equivalent grade uh, complying all the technical requirements. Other documentations which goes batch manufacturing records, stability study, pharmacovalence and bioequivalence study from the same lots or the batches. Zone for stability study, uh, stability study data up to 12 months minimum is mandatory. B has to be performed at Envisa approved center. P at the Reblas lab, co-validation and validation methods before submission and GMP of applicable manufacturing sites. Now let's see what are the challenges while submitting dosia with Envisa. Envisa keeps on change, uh, updating their guidelines very regularly. So every company has to keep a pace along with the updated guideline and develop or redevelop or modify or update their documentation based on Envisa's latest guideline. Approval process with Envisa is very, very, very slow. If it comes to new drugs it, or new brand, branded generic, it goes beyond almost 24 months or so. Or if it is a new drug, it may go more than three years. And the number of approvals given by Envisa are very, very slow as compared to other authority. The process, a submission process is very complicated, like pharmacoequivalence, bioequivalence, dissolution, GMP. It has to be done in orderly manner. So suppose one uh, uh, exhibit batches has been manufactured, then the first stage comes to pharmacoequivalence. So you'll have to send the samples to uh, Envisa, you'll have to identify innovator, you'll have to book the timing with Riblas, and then uh, send reference standards. Once everything reached there uh, on time, then one has to perform PE. After uh, obtaining report of P and uh, diso profiling, then only one can perform bioequivalent study with the same lot. Post bioequivalent study and completion of 12 months stability data, one can submit. So you see, in 12 months of time, one has to submit uh, perform PE, diso profiling, and B by managing samples from India to their logistic issues and uh, Riblas meeting and uh, booking us time slots. So this is. Uh, process is little tricky and uh, time consuming. We'll, we'll take another five minutes for the next country which is uh, Mexico which is considered as highly, um, which is considered a very uh, upcoming emerging economy and have uh, highly developed or most developed uh, regulatory system amongst Latin America. In Mexico, there are a lot many uh, MNCs have come up with the local manufacturing like Ililili, Mox, Sanofi, Aventis, GSK and BMS. The regulatory agency in Mexico is called as uh, COFIPRIS, 
under the Secretariat of Health, which is a Ministry of Health, and it is uh, called as Commission for Sanitary Risk Protection. Uh, it has replaced earlier body in 2003. In 2003, there was another body, re regulatory body responsible, but they have upgraded themselves and uh, now Kofi Press is responsible for registration. Major regulations is general health law and very importantly, being a proximity to USA, Kofi Press cooperates closely with FDA and most of the regulations are uh, obtained from USFDA. Process. When it comes to regulatory process with Mexico, very important parameter for any manufacturing company is to have a hosting company in Mexico or hosting laboratory because the hosting manu local manufacturers or laboratory would be responsible uh, in terms of quality and would be a uh, front face to cofe press. Post that classification of drug, whether it is generic or new generic or new drug. Post classification, the doser has to be prepared as per the guideline of generic or branded generic or new drug. If it is a new drug, if it is oral solid, one has to perform local bioequivalent study. If it is a new drug, local clinical trial is very much essential. Very important parameter for regulatory process in uh, Mexico is uh, brand name approval or trademark approval. So if, if your dossier is through and everything is clear, but if the brand name is not approved or brand name is classing with some local market, the, you, uh, the company, uh, it would be very difficult for company to receive marketing authorization. So very important is to get the brand name approval from Coffee Press or Cof uh, Trademark Authority in Mexico. Post that, evaluation and query response and marketing authorization. Major documentation, as I said, B or CT has to be performed locally. Drug substance is definitely required as EU or EMS, USDMF grade with the numbers. Then also co your company might expect Coffee Press would appoint some local CRO uh, to audit API sites. Reason being, Coffee Press is again uh, mm, uh, not sufficient in terms of resources. So they have, ha they have appointed uh, two or three CROs who would be working for Coffee Press. They would come and audit the manufacturing plants or API plants. Finished product sites also required USFD or EMEA certification. That's the foremost requirement. On top of it, if it uh, the press things that they want to audit, they would definitely come for inspection. What are the regulatory challenges when it comes to Mexico? It's a coffee press backlog. That's a um, long uh, queue in terms of uh, applications. The guidelines are uh, still uh, unclear. When it comes to inspection, they say that you need to have USFD and EMEI inspection. Then they say that you know they are uh, they have recognized few countries uh, where if the inspection of those countries are there with the manufacturing sites, they wouldn't come. But practically, there is no clarity yet. They are not recognizing India and China GMP. So for Indian or Chinese manufacturer, they have to have USFD or EMEI approval. And B and C, uh, city as a local requirement. So this is all about the emerging markets for Brazil and uh, Mexico. Uh, Metina consultant do have expertise uh, across emerging market and US, Europe and Australia. We do have our tie-ups and we have uh, people sitting in each country. So anyone uh, is interested in knowing more about these countries or regulation, please contact us. Our, our email ID is here with and if you have anyone is having any questions, feel free to ask. Yeah. Oh, yes, I think I think maybe we can speak online because if it comes to India, we'll have to speak a lot because there are a lot of regulations that are upcoming. If you see FDC, there are a lot of many guidances they have changed. They have banned a few of the FDCs, uh, the list they have published. They are implementing CTD. They have they are coming up with the pharmacovigilance systems. So no, they have specifically formed a new authority for uh, regulatory sub submissions and approval. They are going for every inspection for imported drugs. So. In India, regulatory framework is changing drastically. What they are doing ideally is they are trying to uh, match the international standards. Uh, 
and that is the reason if you see uh, uh, every every month practically i would say that every month there are some some and another guidelines are upcoming or guidances are upcoming because uh, our uh, uh, drugs and cosmetic acts 1940 1945 and their amendments are quite old and it's it is lacking absolute clarity so that is the reason why you would see lot of guidances but in that the guidances are so also mainly from the european guidelines and documentation so you would find uh, still uh, confusing or you you know you need to go to dcg and uh, cross question that okay fine what does that mean like if you say city uh, ctd guideline they say ctd guideline is applicable for clinical trial as well but when uh, this is documentation they would ask you the complete documentation say completely validation and everything for phase 1 it would be very difficult to submit so uh, there are some loopholes and i think uh, industry is going back to dcgi writing a papers and uh, meeting with dcgi and all the time uh, raising questions to them yeah? thank you yes can someone send the microphone for this gentleman just let me know on the time Yeah, sure. My question was with the, this is regarding this Brazil. Yeah. Uh, you were saying in the second part that we need to sh uh, do an co-manufacturing uh, with the Anvisa guys. Own manufacturing. Co-manufacturing. Co-man. Co-validation. I said not co-manufacturing. So it's an uh, where. Co-validation. Um, uh, I'll ex I'll give an example. So suppose you have perform a formulation uh, by uh, formulation validation over here in India. You are uh, exporting your drugs to Brazil. In Brazil. there must be some local company who would be importing either yours uh, your company subsidiary or somebody else who would be importing so that local company becomes a uh, front face to the authority and visa that local company is responsible to ensure your co products quality so that is the reason that local company has to do co validation means partial validation of the same uh, api and formulation validation if you ha you have performed over in india okay thanks welcome yeah Uh, can't we apply directly from India? I'm sorry. As you said, is it necessary to have local agency in the country? Any any country you go local, uh, either you go through a local importer. It could be a distributor. It could be a local manufacturing company. But yes, every country has its own regulation. Local partner is very much essential. Okay. because no ministry would go and speak foreign manufacturers by their own they would definitely contact their local counterpart so in any country you go your local partner is very essential thank you thank you recently uh, we have been asked for a zoo sanitary certificate sorry zoo sanitary certificate and um, yes brazil uh, in biosimilars they have published guidelines i think um, say 6 8 months before not before that the themselves are uh, uh, you know they when you have received some query like zoo certificate which i have not come across so far this is the first time i am hearing so maybe what you need to do you need to go back and uh, inquire because it would be pertaining to what molecules you have submitted and what is their expectation and what is the logic behind asking that zoo certificate so i think you'll have to go Actually, back uh, to in your slide where you is uh, 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 shown like uh, uh, where the wings, uh, in the wings we are shown. There is a pharmaceutical one, and there is a cosmetic section and a sanitary section. Yeah. So they have somehow asked for a zoo sanitary certificate. So where we have some sanitary, a, it could be maybe they would have asked from health certificate or some uh, biosimilar. Maybe they would be saying that you are not disturbing environment or how. Oh, maybe we'll, you'll have to cross check. But this is again my assumption. You definitely need to cross check with Envisa. Okay. You'll have to go back and uh, inquire what exactly their expectations from the query. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Welcome.